Good morning once again and uh, welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, we have a little bit more to share with you this morning. Now we are going to be talking about the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, of course, uh, which uh, sometime in 2019, July, uh, Nigeria became the 54th uh, country, of course, to sign that agreement. It is an agreement that covers continental trade among uh, 54 uh, countries uh, in Africa. We've invited this morning to have this uh, conversation on what this one-month campaign um, is all about and why it is necessary. Dr. Chiwike Uba is a, an economist development expert. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for having me this morning. All right, all right. Let's start from the very basic and ask why it is necessary to have a campaign. The, the importance of the agreement has been reiterated over time. So do you believe this a campaign that Nigeria plans to um, embark on from January 1, when the agreement kicks off, is necessary? Yeah, it is necessary because um, um, as a country, we we'll have a lot to benefit from that agreement. Secondly, it's important that the, the stakeholders, the participants, that the manufacturers and all the other stakeholders get to understand um, their own um, responsibilities and what they stand to benefit from such agree agreement. And also at the state level, you know, most times we, we, we embed most of the policies at national level, for, forgetting that the states, the subnational governments are also the key drivers of the economy. So in doing so, the campaign will also enable the, the subnational government outside the private sectors to understand what the states stand to benefit and what the industry, what uh, the, 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 the private sector organization does, the, the businesses, especially the manufacturers and providers of services stand to benefit from the agreement and begin to do the right things so that uh, Nigeria as a country will not be found uh, lagging behind as the, as the, as the ASCTS Starts his operation in, on January 1. Yeah, all right. Now you just mentioned it, and that's where I was going. Nigeria being found lagging behind. You know, how possible is that? How ready are we, really? Uh, because it's not just about signing an agreement. There's, you know, all the details that need to be put in place for us to fully participate and benefit from, you know, what this agreement um, offers. Uh, so how ready is the country as it stands? Actually, um, for me, <laughs> Um, being very honest and blunt, I don't think we are really uh, ready for it because our business environment is still very uh, hostile to businesses. And um, what that means is that if we don't uh, have a better business environment that will encourage our industries, our manufacturing sector and professional services to produce enough that will be exported, uh, what it means is that we may also be, be become a dumping ground uh, for most of the products and services that have been provided that have been provided in the uh, African continent. But as a big country, we have a lot to benefit from that. Also, currently, <clears throat> Nigeria is the second ex uh, largest exporter of uh, goods and services in Africa, uh, trailing behind uh, South Africa. So what that means is that, in fact, in West Africa, as you know, we are, uh, the most products that are being used in West Africa is being produced here in Nigeria. Nevertheless, the hard business environment has also led to the closure of some of the uh, factories that were here earlier on. But I know that um, the AFCTA is a color, it's a wake up call for the country, the national and subnational uh, players to begin to put in the right things, and um, not just put in the right things, but putting them at the right time. And that brings us to the, the, the business environment and competitiveness across Nigerian states. If you are right. sorry, if I find out that most states in Nigeria are not business. Uh, friendly, so uh, and, and and it's important that that be begins to happen in terms of po policies, in terms of uh, clear cut interventions to ensuring that we become business 
friendly. You, and you, you say we, 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 yeah. we are not really ready for the takeoff, so to speak. But uh, the Minister of Industry and Trade, Trade and Investment, rather, Otumba Adeni Adebayo, uh, believes that there are lots of opportunity uh, for Nigeria in this agreement. Could you just explain to us again what this trade agreement really means? Uh, for business, not only businesses in Nigeria, but across the continent? It, 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 you know, currently with the over one point, uh, over a billion population in Africa, uh, currently most of the products that are being used in Africa, you know, are, are imported from outside Africa. And now what it is is that given the comparative advantage of the countries within Africa, they will leverage such uh, comparative advantages in terms of inputs, in terms of inputs, I'm, I'm talking about raw materials, and there is a bigger market to sell those goods and services. So it, 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 it becomes a good opportunity for Nigeria, given our large economy, given our large population in terms of the youth population, but the, the other drawback for us also is in terms of having uh, the right skills. Because what, what it means is that most co corporations, given a population and their available labor, might want to cite their industries in the country. So these are the, 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 the benefits to Nigeria and also African. Okay, the network has come up. Uh, at least it allowed us up until now. Let's <laughs> hope that um, um, we'll we get him back him. Uh, quickly. Uh, there's a question I, I was looking forward to asking him about that Nigeria must play a leading role. If he says that we are not ready, how can we really play a leading role in ensuring that the um, African emerging African economic bloc, uh, we are integral in pushing it might, that? It might, it might be difficult. Uh, you know, to play that leading role. We can, you know, act it, but, you know, if we don't see it in figures and in, 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 the, in the economy, then, you know, there's really not much that, you know, we can say that we're leading with. Um, some other thing, you know, some other aspect is, you know, really with where we are today. We are, of course, in a, in a recession. Um, there's talk about, you know, exiting a recession, hopefully sometime in 2021. Um, he also mentioned, you know, how, re how you know, ready we are, you know, in all the geopolitical zones, in all the states, to actually do business with the rest of Africa. And it doesn't seem very likely. Uh, but at that, least the, 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 you know, the, the, the part that a lot of persons are saying uh, could be um, something people appreciate what is the um, opening of the borders. Um, yes. So close the border and you're talking about free trade zone might be counterproductive. But now uh, they said they're reopening. Let's see what happens with that. There's another part I would also want. He said um, a coordinator of um, Africa Trade Policy uh, Center has this opinion that there is no plan B with this arrangement, that it has to work. You know, when you hear comments like that, it gets uh, scary. Um, th that's another question I'm hoping. Uh, do we have him back on now? Yes, okay, so I, w I wanted to start with a part about Nigeria playing uh, a leading role. The minister said Nigeria cannot afford to be left behind, um, stressing that the agreement will form um, a $3.4 trillion uh, economic bloc, which Nigeria must be at the center. You, you say we're not ready. How can we play a leading role when we're not ready? Is this campaign part of that? <laughs> You know, opportunities sometimes may not translate to reality. But uh, uh, if we, if we, you know, I said earlier on, if we do the right things rightly, we might assume that leading role. Let, 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 let me give you an instance. You know, we've been talking over the years that agriculture is the mainstay, and we've been spending a huge amount of money on agriculture. But, but the big question is that have we actually, has those funds that have been expended on agriculture translated to uh, increased yield? The answer is no. It, it because of the approach that we have always used. Recently, I said that you don't address structural issues with a knee-jack approach. If we want to be the, the, the net exporter for agricultural pro products, what are our, our, our own agenda 
what are our own policy formulations to deal with those issues. You don't increase the farm uh, uh, available farm for cropping and say that we are increasing yield. So for Nigeria, we have the potentials. And it behoves on, on, on all of us, I don't want to say the government alone, to begin to identify those frictions, you know, that is impairing and impeding the, 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 the our potentials from becoming realities to addressing them. So one of the first things we we'll need to do is also to begin to invest, you know, removing those frictions that also impeding ease of doing business in the country. At the national level, a lot is happening, but at the subnational level, uh, the ease of this business is not so good. That we can see also from the uh, World Bank subnational doing business reports. Most of the states are not faring well. So it's important that the states be begin to identify those issues and begin to address them in a holistic manner. So it, 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 it involves not just collaboration, it involves consultations and communications among the national and subnational governments to begin to deal with those issues. Secondly, the large population, we can leverage the large population of the typical unemployed youths, uh, they call it the, the, the <laughs> flying geese, by equipping them, giving them the right training, you know, reskilling them. Uh, can you imagine what is happening with the educational sector? We are not budgeting more, and this actually is going on strike every time. How do you expect um, corporation and multinationals to come in when, when, when there is no input, the labor input that will help them to produce? So these are some of the fundamental issues that needs to be addressed for Nigeria to become, to be well positioned to take that leading role. We so as a country, we have potentials, but we are not yet doing the right things. We are saying a lot of things without matching them with Quick, the quickly, right action. Quickly share with us um, um, one or two policies that you think we may need to immediately introduce in order for us to um, gain from this agreement. Um, we've struggled, of course, in the past talking about how our ports, you know, are, are still not fully functional. Uh, we've not been able to tap into the um, gains that we could get from the southeast, from our bar and uh, from Monisha and some of all those places that should provide a lot of um, income for the country. Uh, we've struggled, of course, with Apapa and the you know, corruption that has been mentioned that is going on there. And these this are some of the things that have limited our growth in trade. Um, so help understand or you share with us one or two policies that you think we must immediately start to put in place uh, in order for us to, of course, uh, gain from this. In, in a minute, please. Yeah, the first... Yeah, is to identify the, 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 the do a reality assessment. Like you said, our bar is very critical to the economy of the country. And um, they, even though they have a free export processing zone, but the in terms of the infrastructural requirements, they are not there. In terms of business support services, is not there. So it's important that the federal government, the national government, when I say national government, I mean both the state and the federal, begin to address those fundamental structural issues like like the rules issues, like the business support issues and all that, to encourage the, the players in that sector to begin to produce the more they can. And also uh, have the, uh, the the value chain transmission of uh, services of first port purposes. Now, in terms of agriculture also, we need to move away from what I call increasing farmland to begin to uh, use technology. We need to employ a, a, de deploy technology in determining the quality of soil, the kind of fertilizer you use. That's what, what I'm talking about here is more of me mechanized agriculture. The third thing we have to do is the CBN has been doing a lot, a lot of interventions, sharing funds. We need to identify critical big players with uh, opportunities to scale up and support them adequately to go into those sectors that will drive, I, not just drive an economy, but pro pro producing enough for exports. So these are some of the things we need to do. And, and the border issue also is that also we need to also introduce technology in the way we manage the port system, the port system and the water issues to re reduce smuggling and all the rest of it all. So okay, before, these are before, just quick... 
Uh, in the interest of time, I just have this last one for the road. Um, there are sentiments that we don't have a plan B with this trade agreement and that it must work. Uh, do you agree that there is no plan B? And will this serve as enough push to make participating countries be more committed to it? Um, uh, for me, yes, there's no plan B, but the, the, the way the, the thing is, is running out is coming out in phases. Currently, the the rule, the the, the uh, rule of origin, you know, is all that, that, that is not re restrictive as, as such. It's discretionary. What that means is that it allows people or countries to fit. You know, even when they are not um, 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 importing wholly from, from the African continent, but, but that uh, rule of origin will enable each country to identify where these goods are produced, so that people won't import from the neighboring continents and also reap from the benefits. But in all honesty, there's no plan B yet. But given the first approach of the FCT agreement, uh, uh, I'll, I'll advise you to test run it for some time and see how it pans out. While Nigeria begins, the, the most important thing is for the country to begin to do things that will improve the business environment, to encourage investments in the manufacturing sector and other productive of the economy. All right, That's Dr. Chiwi. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Over. That's the much time will permit us. Uh, I want to say thank you very much for joining us and for sharing uh, some insights um, on this uh, conversation. Thank you. Thank you Merry very Christmas much. Merry Christmas. Right. We have a uh, sports coming up next. A quick conversation on what's going on in the world of sports. And that's how we will be wrapping up the breakfast this morning. And, and um, of course, I'm sure it's been a pretty interesting run. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere.